breaking news from News 8. Breaking news in our Sunrise Smart Start on this Monday. A large police investigation in East Rochester on Linden Avenue at North Washington Street. Carmela Boykin has been live all morning at the scene now with the very latest. Carmela, what's the update? Good morning, Mark. The latest update is from RPD's Captain Frank Umbrino. He's told us that two suspects are in custody. Both are suspects in recent homicides. Behind me is the house in East Rochester, where we presume those arrests have been made. Since we've been here, police have been in and out, removing evidence from the house. We've also been told by the Monroe County Sheriff's Office that at least one of the suspects was being looked for by RPD and the U.S. Marshals in a joint task force. Closed streets, West London Avenue and North Washington Street have been reopened opened and have been reopened for quite some time now. We are still learning details though and of course as we learn more details we'll keep you updated with the latest. In East Rochester, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Mark. Carmela, thank you for the live update. For more on this story as it develops, head to rochesterfirst.com. President Biden is set to sign the bipartisan infrastructure bill later today. That $1.25 trillion spending plan includes new money for the country's physical infrastructure, improving roads, bridges, broadband, and clean water investments as well. We are joined by Washington correspondent Basil John live in D.C. this morning. Basil, good morning. What about the other components of this Build Back Better agenda? Well, Mark, good morning. And yes, the Build Back Better agenda is supposed to be the president's social spending plan. Uh, those are supposed to be issues that tackle the livelihood of Americans throughout the country. So you're looking at some things like expansion of child care and universal pre-K, uh, as well as investments in education and health, in education and housing, and also in the care economy as well. So while it tackles that, the infrastructure bill is only supposed to be tackling things like those roads, those bridges, the broadband, and also water through throughout the U.S. So uh, hand in hand, it's supposed to tackle issues on both fronts. But for right now, we do know the infrastructure bill that will be signed later today as to what will happen with the Build Back Better plan. We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Basil, thank you for the live update in D.C. We should mention the president will also meet with China's leaders during a virtual meeting today as well. In other news, Steve Bannon is expected to turn himself in for an arraignment. The longtime ally of former President Trump was indicted Friday on two counts of contempt of Congress. Bannon refused to comply with a House panel subpoena calling for him to testify and hand over documents in the investigation into the January 6th riots at the Capitol. Closing arguments in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial are scheduled to begin today. The 18-year-old is accused of killing two people and injuring another in Kenosha, Wisconsin, last August after the death of Jacob Blake. If convicted, Rittenhouse could face up to life in prison. James Gilbert with us having a look at the forecast and a chillier start on this Monday. James, good morning. Mark, good morning to you. Uh, I know plenty of uh, some hardcore walkers, runners out there. you got to let the dog go, right, uh, in the morning. And temperatures are uh, going to start off cold. It's in the 30s, and it feels like the 20s once you add that wind chill. Certainly some wet flakes uh, outside, but really only for pockets. A little bit in Way uh, Wyoming County, up uh, into Orleans County as well. But a lot of Monroe right now around Greater Rochester, no issues. You will see some wet roads and even a little bit of uh, a small accumulation on some grassy surfaces in the Finger Lakes. But otherwise, uh, temperatures not moving much, uh, only in the low 40s this afternoon. Bus stop forecast, last look at the eight day at the end of the show. Mark. All right, James, uh, thank you. Another check of the roads with our sunrise traffic. We mentioned it just a couple of minutes ago. One accident at this hour, it's in Brighton on East River Road, right near Kendrick Road. 390, 490, 590, and the thruway up to speed at last check. New this morning, firefighters responding to a garage fire late last night in Pittsburgh. Multiple departments responded to Reeds Parkway around 11 o'clock. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office says the family there did make it out of the home safely. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Also new this morning, a 37-year-old man sent to the hospital after a shooting in Rochester. Police say the victim was shot in the area of Lyle Avenue and Whitney Street before he was found walking along Child Street just after midnight. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There are no suspects in custody. 
Rochester police making an arrest in a fatal shooting from over the weekend involving a father and a son. Officials say 64-year-old Steve Owens shot and killed his son, 34-year-old Malcolm Owens, on Pioneer Street around noontime Saturday. Police say the father also shot another family member who was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Owens was taken into custody last night by U.S. Marshals and charged with second-degree murder. He is due to be arraigned later this morning. A state of emergency has been declared in Rochester amid a string of violence that's claimed the lives of seven people in a three-day span, including a homicide at a bar on West Ridge Road early Saturday. Police say around 2 a.m., a man in his 30s was shot and killed outside the Black Bear Pub. No suspects are in custody. If you have any information about this fatal shooting, you're being asked to call 911. Police have identified the victim in a fatal shooting on St. Paul Street in Rochester last week. Investigators say 24-year-old Armani Allen was approached by at least two suspects outside the RTS station last Thursday. Allen was shot and then beaten to death before the suspects fled. Police do not believe this was a random act. The investigation is ongoing. Arondequoit police are investigating what they're calling a suspicious unattended death. Investigators say a woman was found on Nixon Drive off Culver Road. Police are withholding the identity of the victim uh, pending family notification. The cause of death is still under investigation. Elsewhere, an Ontario County man has been arrested in connection with a fatal hit and run from October. Police say 54-year-old Todd Smith hit and killed 62-year-old Edwin Wesley on South Main Street in Canandaigua. Smith is now facing multiple charges, including vehicular manslaughter, DWI, and leaving the scene of a crime. The Genesee County Sheriff's Office is investigating after a woman allegedly struck a pedestrian and a dog while driving drunk. Deputies say Catherine Vale was arrested Saturday for reckless endangerment and DWI. Officials say it happened around 7 o'clock Saturday night on South Lake Road in Burgeon. We don't have an update on the pedestrian's condition. Vale is due to appear in court next month. New York Senator Chuck Schumer calling for the immediate relief of uh, uh, rising gas prices. Experts say the increase in price is connected in part to the global supply chain. The Senate Majority Leader is calling on federal officials to utilize the country's oil reserves to help slow those rising prices. When gas prices go up, families pinch and pinch and pinch. We're all feeling the pain at the pump right now. Today, the national average for gasoline is $3.14. It was $2.23 a year ago. But last time, we were locked away a year ago. It was COVID. Senator Schumer also says using some of the reserves, 600 million barrels of oil here in the U.S. could help at the pump ahead of holiday travel. Here's what a lot of folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. A big bounce back for the Bills as they beat the Jets 45-17. Buffalo's offense exploding in the second half, finishing the game with 489 total yards. Stephon Diggs coming up big. Eight catches, 162 yards, and a touch. The Bills are atop the AFC East at 6-3. and three. They are home next Sunday against the Colts. And you can see that right here on Channel 8, WROC. And it's uh, starting to shape up in the AFC East between the Bills yeah. and a familiar foe, yeah. the Patriots. Certainly sneaking up uh, back there. Yes. Uh, there'll be time to contemplate that. In the meantime, good to see the Bills get back on track. Yeah, certainly. It was a game that they really w were looking forward to bouncing back. Yeah. And uh, not only the offense, but you got the defense that uh, did pretty well as, as well. So. Yeah, five takeaways uh, will help you win a lot of football games. Yeah, certainly. Hey, uh, bundling up at the bus stop will help you feel good on a Monday as well. I think that's a good idea. Sunrise at 7.04. It is cold, not only for the pickup, but the drop-off as well. We're stuck in the 30s. Feels like the 20s at times throughout the day. Uh, here we'll finish with the eight-day forecast here as we look for the rest of the week. Couple of lake effect showers around, rain and snow this afternoon, then drier with clouds Tuesday, uh, Wednesday breezy, mild, jump into the mid 50s. That'll be nice, and then Thursday pretty decent there as well. Uh, so kind of a mix here, Mark, mm -hmm. of uh, all over the place, but no big storms uh, in the forecast for the next week, week and a half as we get closer to the holidays. Yeah, feels like uh, November right there, yeah. James. Thank you. That's it for us for now here on Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next.
Have a great Monday. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.